This week's project is going to be this awesome mudroom bench. Uh, just FYI, you do not have to use a live edge slab at the top of this. You can actually just use two 2x10s two if you would like or whatever you have laying around. Let's get started. So before we get started, I'm going to take a minute to thank the sponsors of this week's video, Craig Tools. You're going to be seeing a lot of their tools being used during the build of this. You're going to see the 720 Pro, the 520 Pro, as well as the adaptive cutting system. I'll throw a link to their website in my bio. If you see anything that you like, check it out and support the ones that support us. Let's get started. So we're going to start out by cutting our material. I'll put a full cut list in the description. That way you can just bang these things out. So once you get all of your parts cut from the faceplate cut list, we're just gonna lay this out on a flat work surface. The top rail will be placed on the inside of the two legs, even with the top. And then we're gonna put our 12 inch center boards in and then bring the bottom board up to those. It's actually gonna leave about an inch of leg left on the bottom, but no worries. That's all gonna be covered up with the base, you'll see. So now we have everything laid out and spaced out equally. So now we can start marking where we want to place our pocket holes. And I put two pocket holes on the ends of each center board as well as the ends of the top and the bottom board. Now it's time for assembly. I'm gonna be using an inch and a quarter pocket hole screws because the material that I'm using for my face plates is actually three quarters of an inch thick. So now that we have the faceplate done, we can move on to the side panels. And just like we did for the faceplate, we're gonna get these side panels laid out on a flat surface, measured, squared, and ready for pocket holes. The 720 Pro makes these repeat cuts a breeze. So once we have our side panels made up, we're gonna be adding a backer for this. I'm gonna use Craig's adaptive cutting system to get this done. And you'll probably notice that this backboard will actually be one half of an inch shorter than our actual square that we had made up for our sides. The reason for this is for the placement of the back panel once we're finished. So make sure to square the backboard with the front of the panel, leaving the half inch gap in the back. And now it's time for some more pocket holes on the front side of the side panels in order to attach it to our faceplate. Okay, now we can see that she's starting to come together. Let's make sure that we get everything good and squared up exactly where we want it before we move on. Now we're gonna put on some bottom brace boards. This is just to basically to support the bottom of this little cabinet slash mudroom bench. So now we're ready to cut our bottom board. Once we get this cut, we'll just slide it into place and make sure everything fits, but we will not fasten it down at this point. And now it's time for the top. And again, like I said at the beginning of this video, you do not have to have a live edge slab. That's just what I had kind of laying around. You can actually make a really nice top out of a couple of two by tens, join together a nice finish on that, or really whatever you have laying around. So once your bench seat is ready, just kind of retrofit it onto what you already have. And while I was making this video before assembly, I did not put my pocket holes 
into the tops of my sides to actually support and hold the bench seat down. So the 520 Pro came in handy here to actually go back and do something that I should have done at the beginning. Now it's time to fasten this bottom down. Make sure everything is nice and square and exactly where you want it before you fasten the bottom. The bottom will actually lock everything together. Now it's time to cut our back panel. Even though I've given you a dimension in the description, I would still measure the back of this as everybody knows that every different store has different material thicknesses. So to be on the safe side, let's just remeasure. So let's dress this up a bit with some three quarter inch cold molding. We'll just put it into the inside of the end plates Again, this is going to be something that you'll need to measure just to make sure that we have nice, clean, fitting corners. And to really make this thing pop, we're going to add our baseboard to it. This is three inch baseboard. You can pretty much use any type of design that you would like for this. But like any trim, we do need to measure this out so we can custom fit it just like you would for any project. And now it's time to paint. You can use any colors that you would like. You can mix and match, make them all the same color, paint your trim the same color as your base. That's up to you. Now that the paint is dry, we can put our top on, we put our finish on our top, and we're just fastening everything together. After I had my top on, I did go back and put some three quarter inch flat trim underneath of the top, just to spice it up a bit. But that's up to you. And that's all there is to it. Now we have this beautiful mudroom bench, farmhouse style. You can distress it how you would like. You can put your own twist to it. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like what you've seen, make sure to smash that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. I have tons more where this is coming from.